So in this video presentation, we're going to look at measuring the resistance of the protective bonding conductor. This is the conductor we're simulating a domestic dwelling that's usually sized 10 millimeters squared and goes off to make connections to the metallic water pipe and the metallic gas pipe, but also can go off to the metallic oil pipe, metallic structure of a building, if you've got a metal frame building. We see it's here, it's terminated within an MET. So we've got a gas which isn't present in this location, it's somewhere else, and one for water. Often the MET is not present in the installation and these connections are made within the consumer's unit itself. However, City and Guilds and EAL always instruct us as colleges to have a separate MET. However, we can't just pull out the gas bonding in this case, or the water bonding, those protective bonding conductors cannot be removed with the supply still energized. So let's think about why the thinking is behind that. So if I was to pull out, in this case, the water bond, so the protective bonding conductor to the water was taken out with the installation still live, and there was an earth fault somewhere in the installation. We know from studying in the classroom that under earth fault conditions, all earth metal work becomes live. So in this case, metal clad socket, which is earthed, metal clad consumer unit, etc. within the installation under earth fault conditions goes live. If we've disconnected the protective bonding conductor to the water under earth fault conditions, that wouldn't go live. If I was able to touch adjacent metal work, so for instance, the water pipe and the metal clad socket, metal clad consumer unit, or some earth metal work in the installation, I would be at a differing potential. No volts would appear in the disconnected water because the protective bonding conductor would be out. However, the metal clad socket, consuming, etc., would have a voltage appearing in it. We always discuss that to be up to 50 volts AC. I touch the pipe at zero volts and the metal clad socket at 50 volts. Difference in potential, I receive an electric shock. Therefore, this test must be carried out with the supply isolated. I've isolated in the double pole switch or linked main switch in the tails. I've expressed how to do that in previous video presentations. Equally, you could make the isolation within the consumer's unit itself. And again, I've shown that in a previous presentation. Supply is isolated before we start the test. We've isolated the supply here. I've shown it in a previous video presentation. Let's get set up now to measure the resistance of the protective bonding conductor in this insulation to a water pipe and to a gas pipe which is elsewhere within the installation. So see how we're going to do that. So I've isolated the supply, in this case at the linked main switch or double pole switch in the tails. I've proved the whole installation has been isolated, so I'm now able to disconnect the protective bonding conductor from the MET which is remote from the consumer's unit. Remember, often these protective bonding conductors will be connected within the consumer's unit itself. So I'm going to disconnect the one that's labelled with a W, hoping it's simulating the one for the water, the water pipe being simulated here. The second one has G on it and the gas pipe is elsewhere in the installation. We'll look for that in a few moments. So let's disconnect it from the MET. And now we can make a connection with our own meter from the disconnected protective bonding conductor onto the front of the clamp and then onto the pipe work to prove it is continuous. We expect the reading to be less than 0.05 of an ohm which is approximately 27 meters of 10 millimeter squared cable. We're simulating a domestic dwelling. If for some reason you're in a domestic dwelling and your water or gas pipe, etc., are further away than that, you'll find you'll need to increase the size to 16 millimeters squared. Let's see how we're gonna carry out the test. So we're all set up now ready to measure the continuity of the protective bonding conductor. As stated in previous presentations, I've set it into the orange scale for measuring resistance in ohms, and I'm using the red and green sections within the top of the Mega MFT. Crocodile clip onto the disconnected water protective bonding conductor, and I'm now going to take a measurement on the front of the clamp, and I've got 0.01 ohms. I'm also going to make a connection onto the pipe work itself, and I've got a reading of 0.02 ohms. It's all well and good proving that the protective bonding conductor makes the front of the clamp, but the earth has got to travel through the clamp and make the pipe wet work behind. I recommend if it is tarnished or covered in paint that we use some wire wool in order to brighten up the connection so we can prove that the protective bonding conductor actually is earthing the metal work and not just earthing the clamp. A reading of 0.02 is less than the maximum, which is 0.05. We've proved it is continuous from here, one end disconnected from the MET, 
to both the clamp and pipe work. We just need to repeat the same process now for the gas, which is not in this location. Therefore, we need a longer wandering lead in order to get out to the gas itself. Let's see how we're going to set that up. Before moving on to the gas, I've ensured I've reconnected my protective bonding conductor for my water. I also confirmed that the clamp is secured against the pipe, as well as the cable secured within the clamp itself. I can now move on to the gas. As my gas pipe is some distance away from the MET, I'm going to need to use a wandering lead. This is a 20 meter long wandering lead, and I will need to remove the resistance of that lead. So we're going to insert it into the machine. So we're going to take one end and probe it into the machine. The other end is going to have a crocodile clip on it. Take a normal lead, insert it in the other half, and now remove the resistance of this long 20 meter wandering lead, exactly the same as we would our normal leads itself. So move it onto ohms as we usually do. And let's see what we get. Got a read in, in this case, flashing less than zero. I press the test button once. I have a reading of 0 0.69. I press it again. I now have a reading of zero. So what's happened now is I've removed the resistance of what now is a 20 meter lead rather than just the normal short leads that we have on the instrument. I can now unwind my wandering lead connecting it onto one end of the protective bonding conductor disconnected and make my connection to the clamp and to the gas pipe. Let's see how we're gonna do that. One end of my wandering lead has been connected to the gas. I've unraveled my lead and I'm now walking down to where the other end is connected to the gas pipe. So I've come out to where the gas pipe has its connection to the protective bonding conductor. I'm going to confirm the clamp is secure and so is the conductor. I've also brightened up the pipe work to prove continuity goes from the conductor on the clamp through to the pipe. And I expect a reading no greater than 0.05 of an ohm. Make my connection and I've got on the actual connection to the clamp 0.03 ohms. I make my next connection onto the actual pipe work itself and I've got a reading of 0 0.03 ohms. The readings are below the maximum allowed which is 0 0.05. I've proved the continuity of the protective bonding conductor. However, before I turn the installation back on, I must confirm I've reconnected both the water and gas protective bonding conductors. I hope this video has been some help.